Hello from Victoria and me and welcome to this evening's programme. First, a night of terror for more than 50 guests who had to flee to safety as their hotel went up in flames. The fire virtually destroyed the Premier Inn at Brackley Hatch in Northamptonshire, close to the Silverstone F1 circuit, which stages the British Grand Prix this weekend. Well, remarkably, no one was injured. Two men are now being held by police in connection with the fire. Well, our correspondent Neil Bradford is at Brackley Hatch and joins us now. Neil, it must have been an ordeal for everyone at the hotel. That's right, many of the guests were in their room when the fire alarm sounded last night. This was not a false alarm or an accident. It was for real. The fire, it's believed, started at the rear of the hotel in what appears to be some plastic bins containing linen. And one guest told me how he opened the fire door on the ground floor to flames and had to escape via another means. Thankfully, though, no one was injured. As you say, two people are being questioned by police. And you can see uh, just how much damage this fire has caused to the hotel. But thankfully, no one injured. And they've been able to recount their tales today. 20 miles from where they first checked in, this morning guests were waking up in a different hotel. With no belongings, it was left to the Red Cross to provide a change of clothes, toiletries, and for some, much needed medication. Not the start to the day Lee Johnson had imagined when he travelled from Southampton on business. That said, today began much better than yesterday ended. Just sat down to watch the field, and the fire alarm went, so chucked some clothes on, went out the door. Um, went straight to the nearest fire exit and opened the door and unfortunately it was a bin right next to the fire exit that was on fire so opened the door to a load of flames so shut the door a bit quick and turned around and went the other way and just sort of shouted to everybody else go the other way it's thought the fire may have started in bins containing laundry outside the hotel today as police and fire officers continued their investigations news emerged that it may have been started deliberately Two men have been arrested on suspicion of arson and are being questioned at a Northampton police station. More than 50 firefighters were sent to the scene alongside the A43 when the alarm was raised just before 10 last night. No one was injured, but a large part of the two-storey building has been destroyed. 55 guests, some ferried in taxis, were found rooms at another Premier Inn near Northampton. Among them, Chris and Sarah Samuels. They'd been celebrating the arrival of their first grandson, when they returned to find the hotel in flames. This morning, a fact that was still sinking in. I couldn't believe it because everything had been so normal the day before and we left the room tidy and with our belongings, thinking <laughs> we're going to have a good day and we'll come back and all we need to do is just crash out after a busy day. Bob Blakelock travelled from Devon for a family occasion. Losing his possessions is an inconvenience, but like most guests, he's just glad he's able to tell the tale. We checked in in the afternoon, went out for the evening, came back about 20 to 10 to see that at the far end of the building there were flames visible and people starting to come out. So the, the alarm must have only just gone off at about the time we arrived. Luton-based Premier Inn says it's trying to transfer as many as possible to its other hotels in the area. Tonight, as guests return to salvage what they can of their possessions, they're left to reflect on what could so easily have been a tragedy. Well, back to Neil. Neil, just looking at those pictures, remarkable that no one was injured. But two men arrested this evening. What more can you tell us about that? Yes, they are a 36-year-old man from Coventry and a 20-year-old man from Leicester. They've been arrested on suspicion of arson. They're being questioned at Western Fable Police Station in Northampton. Now, police say this is an isolated incident. Of course, it is the British Grand Prix this weekend. This hotel is but a few miles away from there, but they say there have been no other similar fires, and there is nothing to suggest that this is linked in any way to this weekend's British Grand Prix, but nonetheless a terrifying ordeal for those involved and of course disappointment for around 120 uh, motor racing fans who are due to stay here at the weekend and now have no accommodation. Indeed, Neil, thank you very much for that. Right, moving on next tonight, more problems with the troubled Cambridge guided busway. The project should have opened in spring 2009 but a series of disagreements between the council and the contractor mean it may now not be up and running until next year, two years behind schedule. Emma Baker has this report. It's been waiting on a red light for the last 18 months, and there's no sign of change on the horizon. 
Now the county council's accepted the guided busway may not be up and running until 2011, two years later than expected. Today, locals shrug their shoulders in disgust. It's a very expensive cycle walkway. That's my, my feelings anyway. Total waste of money, all of it. The money could have been spent a, a better way. There's so many things you could have spent it on. I just think it's a total waste of money. Of course, this news won't come as a surprise to many would-be passengers. They've been waiting for the guided busway since the original date of February 2009. That then got moved back to late summer 2009. When that deadline was missed, the council announced a new date of November 2009. That, of course, has been and gone. Now the two sides are working towards December 2010 as the final handover date. But, of course, that is just that, a handover date. There's still no exact guarantee as to when the guided busway will be up and running. The council says the main problem is the contractor's failure to fix six outstanding jobs on the completed section of the route from Cambridge to St Ives. Is this not just incompetence on your part as a project manager? Um, I, th I think we certainly don't see it as incompetence on our part. I mean, we, we cannot understand why these simple items are not being sorted out. and We really can't understand actually why we found ourselves in this, this particular situation and, and why the contractor is, uh, is, is behaving as they are. Um, d just to be clear, they know precisely what has to be done just to finish off the northern part of the busway and it, it just doesn't seem to be happening. We asked the contractors Bam Nuttall for an interview today, but they said contractually they were unable to talk directly to the press. The MG Owners Club is situated next to the Swavesy bus stop. It had been looking forward to the busway as a useful facility for both staff and customers. Well, it's, it's quite frightening, really, because we, we've seen the project through from almost inception to where we are today, and uh, we're still no further forward, it seems, other than it's built but not being used. Until now, the problems in Cambridgeshire haven't put others off guided busways. An £84 million scheme has been approved near Luton. The plans link the town to Houghton Regis and Dunstable along a disused railway track. No doubt the leaders of that project will be hoping to learn a lot from the mistakes of this one. Emma Baker, Anglia News, Swavesy. Next, a story of...